Welcome to the Medical Menemist Podcast, your source for memory techniques and accelerated learning in higher education. Now, here's your host, Chase DeMarco. Welcome back. I'm your host, Chase DeMarco, and today I want to cover something that I recently covered in an interview with Sam Smith on the MCAT Basics Podcast. We were covering the different evidence-based techniques as we usually do, And I mentioned interleaving because this is one of the evidence-based study techniques, but it's a little tricky to get the hang of. It's a little complicated because there's no golden rule. There's no 11311 rule like we've discussed in past episodes for space repetition. There's no real evidence that doing it this way or that way is going to be better. And I think part of that reason is because there's so much complexity to it. It depends on the number of topics you're covering how much depth you need on each topic, what the material is, the individual and their schedule, and so many other factors that there's no best practices. There's no best way to go about it. Here are some tips that I've found in the past to be useful to look out for. And you're going to adjust this as you go, as you find out what works best for you. But here's a good starting point. So let's say we're doing this on a discipline-based approach. And we have things like anatomy, biochemistry, physio, pharmacology, and we want to divide these up over our week. There are a couple of different ways we could approach this, but here's one way we could do it. We could start ramping up at the beginning of the week. Let's take one of the larger topics, at least when you're in med school. Anatomy has a lot of new content that you have to cover, but maybe we don't want to jump off going zero to 60 in under three seconds or something, but we're going to ramp up our study process a little. So let's say Monday, we're going to study just anatomy, but we're going to put about 80% of our total time energy into this study and then take a little break. Then Tuesday, we're going to ramp it up. So we're using 100% of our energy. We're going to divide it up, maybe 80% towards pharmacology and then 20% for review of anatomy from yesterday. Wednesday, we can pick up a little bit more, adding more topics to it. Maybe we'll want to pick a smaller subject here so we don't have three large categories, large topics all at once. So maybe we can dedicate 60% of today to biochemistry, 30% for yesterday's farm, and 10% for the anatomy that we started covering on Monday. So you see, by dividing up our time like this and ramping it up and also giving some time to the previous topics we've been studying, this helps to avoid the forgetting curve. And you can think of this as a three-day rule, where basically after three days, you're going to forget most of what you studied three days ago if you haven't reviewed it in the meantime. And by dividing up these topics as well, we can prevent burning out from just one thing. If I spent all week studying one topic, whether that be pharmacology or anatomy or even something as advanced or diverse as pathology, I'm going to get a little burnt out on that topic. So by interleaving these materials, we can use it as a spacing effect. We can use it to intermingle different topics and maybe find some similarities between these different disciplines. And we can prevent burnout from studying one thing too much. On top of interleaving our discipline-based approach, we can interleave our materials that we are using to study. So for instance, you might want to start off with a quick review book or video lecture on the topic just to get a refresher of the material. Then you might want to use QBank questions to really make sure you understand the material in depth and you have that rehearsal knowledge. Then you might want to use flashcards to add extra repetitions to certain topics that you're struggling with that you got wrong or need a deeper dive in. And you can always elaborate on these. As we recently covered in elaborative interrogation a couple episodes ago, getting a deeper dive into this material. You might find more connections between them. You might get a deeper understanding of that one subject individually. And all of this helps to recall the information better later on. It helps to strengthen the memory of that topic. And one thing to remember when we're picking resources, such as QBanks, is most of the quote-unquote evidence out there is just anecdotal evidence. So it's mostly forums where students go on and say they like this product or they don't like that product. And if they give a very detailed reason for why they liked and did not like a certain thing, that's better than most. Again, this is all anecdotal. We don't actually have objective evidence for what resource might be better. And a lot of the companies don't have the ability to really perform that kind of analysis or they don't want to. 
They already have the market cornered, so why would they need to? So when we're discussing anecdotal evidence between maybe the top rated content out there and maybe the second or third most popular content out there being rated by students, the actual difference between them is probably pretty insignificant. So the reason I bring this up is because of the expense for different products, especially if we're talking about something like QBanks, they can get quite pricey pretty quick. And a recent interview I did with Dr. Corey Fawcett on the Prospective Doctor podcast, which should be releasing pretty soon to the release of this episode, is that every dollar you spend on your education, if you have to take out loans for it or go into debt for it, can add up to $4 by the end of your repayment. So what I'm trying to get at here is when you're looking at resources, whether this be review textbooks, QBanks, video lecture sets, anything that you are thinking of purchasing to supplement the education that you have in school, you want to consider, are you able to afford this or are you going to have to go into debt for it? If you have to go into debt, if you're using your student loans to pay for it, if you're doing anything like that, you have to quadruple the price tag on it to get an accurate representation of what you're paying. And then you have to ask yourself if it's worth that. Now, if you don't mind going into debt or you have someone else paying for it or you have finances available for this and you just want the ultimate best recommended resource, then go for it. Feel free. I'm not saying not to use these resources. I'm just saying there's a calculus that should go into it because I really don't recommend people going into debt just to purchase material based on someone's random thought on a random forum of what's best. If the company doesn't have a free trial for you to try out, then it might not ultimately be worth using that versus a second or third recommendation. All right, enough of that financial rant. So let's say you have your QBank selected now, and maybe you even have one offered by your school, and it's free, and that's perfect. You can use the filter options in most of these QBank products to search by category. And why you're going to want to use this is it helps you to schedule out your interleaving process later on. Once you have a general idea of how many questions go into each topic, each discipline, each subject, then you can make your schedule accordingly and also associate that with the amount of time you're going to use on other resources for that content or making flashcards for that content. So if you have 50 questions in this subject, but you have 200 questions in that subject, you're going to need to associate different scheduled blocks, different amounts of time for them. But you also might be quicker at answering these types of questions than those types of questions. So all of these go into your general schedule when you're calculating it out, but you need to make sure to give yourself a flexible schedule as well. So when you're going over the review material, possibly at the start of your practice for a certain discipline, then you might have only one chapter here, but a lot of QBank questions. But then you only have a couple of flashcards made because you got most of the answers right the first time. There's a lot of different variations with how you schedule your interleaving process. And these are just a couple of factors to keep in mind so that you can make it as efficient as possible and as adaptable as you need it to be. But also don't forget to schedule in breaks. Most of us, from my experience, like to set in a seven day schedule and we just want to keep going, keep going, keep going, plow through as much material as we can. But the simple fact is that's not the best way to approach this usually. We need to rest in order to grow. And in fact, we mentioned this in our book, Read This Before Medical School. There's an interesting equation that we ran across in our studies called the growth equation. And it's a similar aspect used for physical growth as for mental growth. But it states that stress plus rest equals growth. So you can picture this easily if you're working out three, four, five times a day really hard, and then you're taking a couple of days off to rest, let your muscles rest that's when they're going to also grow. They're going to recuperate. And your brain needs that as well. But most of us don't plan our breaks. And if we don't schedule our breaks, we're less likely to take them. And ultimately, we're probably harming our ultimate efficiency at studying this material. So make sure to add your scheduled breaks within your interleaving process. So interleaving is also good because it basically acts as a spaced repetition. If you think about it, maybe yesterday I covered some review material in a book for anatomy or went over my class notes. And maybe I came across some information in my review that I thought, oh, I've never heard this before, or is it really that high yield? And I might be unsure of it. And if I'm unsure of it, then I might dedicate less cognitive work to actually memorizing that topic or that association. But then today I go over some QBank questions from the anatomy section, and now I see a question that is based on that topic I was just wondering about yesterday. 
I haven't forgotten about it yet because it was just yesterday. It hasn't been three days yet. Even though you can forget a lot in a day, we still might retain a significant amount of information from the day before. I noticed that conflict and now I'm like, huh, I've seen it twice now. Okay, it's probably more important than I thought it was to begin with. And then tomorrow, I'm going to go over my flashcards for the anatomy section and for the questions I just got wrong. So now you're having multiple repetitions of the same material as you're interleaving it with other materials throughout the day. So I went over my anatomy cue bank today, but because I went over my review materials for anatomy yesterday, maybe today I'm going to go over my farm review materials. And then tomorrow, I'm going to go over the farm cue bank as I go over my anatomy flashcards and go over my biochemistry review materials. And you're interleaving these different subjects and the different materials and adding more repetitions into everything. Just be aware of the recency effect and the recency bias, because these can play a big part when you're reviewing materials over simultaneous days. And this can work to your benefit or possibly even harm a little bit. And that basically states that because you saw it recently, maybe a certain answer or certain question stem, you're going to be more likely to recognize that another time and even associate it with being more correct than it probably should because you saw it more recently. So your brain thinks it must be more important. It's stronger in my memory. This can be great when you're learning difficult, but still high yield materials because you've covered it so many times. Now you're getting the extra repetitions. You're getting the recency bias playing a part and saying, okay, I recognize that too. It's probably that one. But if it's something you haven't covered in a while, it's a less high yield topic, you're more likely to accidentally pick an answer based on recently seeing something about it than based on any actual strength of the association of it being a correct answer. So just something to be aware of. The more you can study your own metacognition of your thought process of why you're actually selecting certain answers, not just because, oh, I recognize that, so I'm going to select it, but ask yourself why. Why do I think that's right? Or why do I think this other one is less correct or incorrect is really going to help later on. And then lastly, I want to cover a topic that I recently ran across. You see it all the times in the forums, and it's kind of, I would say, conflicting information as well, because it has to do with going over QBank questions twice. You'll see all the time, I went over this QBank two times before taking my exam. And at least anecdotally, I don't believe most students do this or can do this. It's very time consuming. And if you're one that can go through a QBank that many repetitions, that many questions in that space of time, you're probably in the higher echelon of students in general. You probably have enough familiarity or past experiences or something that allow you to go through these questions much quicker than the average student can. So I don't think that really applies to most students. And in fact, in the USMLE Step 1 Success Stories by Physio podcast, I think they cover this in several of their interviews too. A lot of their students, the interviews that they conducted on their show, do not go over a certain cue bank two times. They use a multitude of different tactics. So if you're one of those students like me saying, geez, I can only get through a handful of questions a day because I'm going through and reading each one of the incorrect answers, making sure I understand why they're incorrect, then making a note card on it, and et cetera, et cetera. Don't worry. You don't need to go through quantity of questions. You need to go through it in quality. You need to add that deeper elaboration, ask questions, Make sure to fill in gaps, and that's going to help you more in the long run. So if you have time, at least try to go over the questions that you got incorrect the first time to make sure you've made the necessary mental connections and you're now getting that answer correct. But you don't need to necessarily go over everything twice. So if you're not at that stage, if you're nowhere close to being able to finish that in your allotted timeline, don't worry about it. That's one of those things that you see on forums that usually only the top percentage of students can do, in my opinion anyway, from what I've heard so far. And there are a lot of things that are going to differentiate us from those students, and trying to compare ourselves to other students is just going to cause more undue stress. We are not them. We're not trying to be them. We're trying to be the best us. So I hope that clarifies interleaving a bit, how you can use it to schedule out your studies, how you can use it to interleave different topics, and almost create this three-dimensional array of interleaving different materials and different disciplines, how to choose some resources and some reasoning behind it, or reasons that I think you should choose or should not choose certain resources, and don't stress about what you can't afford or what you can't get to, how many questions you get to, all of these other factors. Again, we're just trying to stress our body enough for that growth equation. We're trying to reach 
a greater understanding than we had yesterday and a much greater understanding than we had a week ago and a much, much greater understanding than we had a month or several months ago. It's all about slow progress. So I'll leave you with that. I hope you've enjoyed this content. Please reach out with any questions you have and have a great rest of your day. One great way to excel in your studies is to download our free PDF of study skills, memory techniques, and other fun tools that you can implement right away and begin accelerating your education. Go to freemeded.org slash medstudent to download our free essentials guide or read this before medical school. You can also purchase the full book with all of our tips, tools, and advice. Read this before medical school at your bookstore of choice. And if you've already done that, please do leave a review at premeded.org slash book review.